Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here is your theater of romance from Hollywood. Colgate tooth powder for a breath that's sweet and halo shampoo to glorify your hair bring you Humphrey Bogart, the dynamic star of Warner Brothers, and Joan Bennett. Colgate tooth powder for a breath that's sweet and halo shampoo to glorify your hair. Present the Colgate Halo Theater of Romance from Hollywood. Warner Brothers, producers of the soon-to-be-released San Antonio, brought to the screen some years ago one of the most beautiful and dramatic love stories of all time. It created an impression never to be forgotten. And the Colgate Halo Theater of Romance is particularly proud to present tonight the Gene Holloway adaptation of this great story, One Way Passage. Here is your play, and here are your stars, Humphrey Bogart and Joan Bennett. We met for the first time, Joan and I, at a bar in Hong Kong. There was no one to introduce us, but there are times when people need no introductions. I was standing there alone except for the bartender and more than a little bit lonely. I asked the bartender to let me mix my own drink. He looked at me like I was crazy. You know, you're the first customer I've ever had that wanted to mix his own drinks. Oh, I'm very particular about how my drinks are made. Well, what do you call that? The paradise. When anyone comes along who knows that every second of life is important, you make him one of these. I know every second is important. Okay, lady. Then have a few drops of paradise. Thanks. My name's Dan. Mine's Joan. Hello, Joan. Hello, Dan. Shall we drink to our brief meeting? Yes. Hail and farewell. Come on, Joan. We'll miss the How boat. Oh, those really are my friends. Would you like to meet them? Luck like has allowed us only a few drops of a cocktail. And the others might spoil it. You're right. We'll trust luck to come around again. Wait a minute, Joan. There's a bit of a ceremony to the finish of our cocktails. Oh, bartender. Are a couple of dollars enough? What for? These glasses. Oh, sure. They're ours now, Joan. And so that no one else can share our paradise, we'll break them. There. Goodbye, Dan. Goodbye, Joan. Before we met for the second time, each of us brushed shoulders with death. Death walked up to me with a gun in his pocket and said his name was Steve Burke. It's been a long chase, Dan. Now, don't try anything. My gun's in my pocket and my finger's on the trigger. Okay, kid. Where do we go now? The boat and then San Quentin. I've got to get my clothes. I always look... always like to look my best on my way to an execution. Your clothes are on board. Oh, very considerate of you. <laughs> Here, you, uh, you don't mind sharing a bracelet with me, do you? Must we be so chummy? Yeah. This time you're not getting away. Come on, Dan, let's get moving. We got a boat to catch. Tell me, how did you manage to trail me out of Sagan? The porter. You gave him 400 francs to keep his mouth shut. I gave him 500 to talk. Oh, isn't that enough to shatter one's faith in human nature? You know, you ought to be very grateful to me on the whole, Steve. How many cops get a chance to take a trip around the world? <laughs> Marseilles, Algiers, Cairo, and now Hong Kong, Honolulu, and uh, San Francisco. You're right. You know, you're a pretty nice guy, Hardesty. It's too bad you had to commit murder. I'm not sorry. The guy was a rat. He had it coming to him. Well, fortunately, or unfortunately for you, the courts administer justice in our country. So I guess this is the last lap for you, Nan. Yeah, I know. And I would have to make it in handcuffs. Well, maybe we'll take them off when we get out of ways. I'll take my chances on you as long as it's a long swim from land. I didn't know that Joan would be on that same boat. Or that at that very instant she was having her own terrifying moment. Turn down the bed right away. Miss Ames is going to bed and rest. Yes, Doctor. No, I'm not going to bed. We'll be casting off in a few minutes. I want to be up on deck for that. You don't obey a doctor's orders? Oh, I used to, but not anymore. Why should I? Have you had the seriousness of your case explained to you? Don't you know that absolute rest and care are indicated? Yes, but I... I don't want to pass the little time I have left just lying down waiting to die. So I keep waltzing around the world and no one knows except my maid. 
You see, Doctor, there's nothing more devastating than kind, pitying people when, when you're in a fix like this. I don't want pity or sympathy. When it happens, I want all the lights going in an orchestra playing, and I want to be on my way someplace. Don't you see how important every minute is to me? Yes, I do see. But if you should need me, let me know. Yes, I will, Doctor, and thank you. We met Joan and I for the second time in the ship's bar as the sun was going down. Two people who knew that every second was important because they could almost count theirs to the end. Hello, Dan. Hello, Joan. The luck's come back. So I see, in full measure. Oh, uh, I'd like you to meet an old friend of mine, Mr. Burke. Hello, Mr. Burke. Glad to meet you. Steve and I are, well, uh, <laughs> Uh, we're, uh, we're sort of traveling together. Well, how nice. Yeah, we're together all the time. Um, may I borrow him once in a while? You sure may, as long as you're careful not to lose him. No, I won't lose him. Come out on deck, Dan. Go ahead, Dan. It's a nice sunset. Thanks. See you later. The day knows how to go out, doesn't it, Dan? What does the setting sun make you think of? Oh, the Angelus. <laughs> It's a silly game, but will you play it with me? Anything. What is it? It's a game where I can find out all about you. Oh, what do we do? I say words or phrases, and you say whatever comes to your mind. Go ahead. Water. Laughter. And laughter? You. Light. Death. Good. Green grass. <laughs> Bare feet. White clouds. Freedom. Excitement. Your eyes. Cabbages. <laughs> Kings. Will of the wisp. Quickly. Sadness. A long search. Love. The end of the search. You know all about me now? Yes. Oh, listen, do you know that song they're playing? Where was I? The moon was high. The night that you first listened to a lie. Where was I? I always felt... <laughs> What's the matter? Am I boring you? No, 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 not, not at all. I was just wishing... Wishing what? That you had been the girl next door. And that I had met you a long time ago. After our second meeting, we met every day, holding on to each moment as though it were the last always reluctant to see the day end. Those were brilliant, exciting, slightly desperate hours. Have you said anything to the girl, Dan? No. Well, I don't blame you. I'm meeting her now up on deck. We'll be in Honolulu tomorrow. You better not make any plans. You won't be getting off the ship. Yeah, I know. Wonderful moon, isn't it? Wonderful. Where are we? I haven't known since Hong Kong. We're on a ship in the Pacific. One very small ship on one very big ocean. Tomorrow we'll be in Honolulu. Five days from tomorrow, you'll be at the Golden Gate. I'll be? Where will you be? I don't know. You want to ask me any questions? No. I think you'll be going through the Golden Gate with me. Look at those stars. They're like us. Tiny specks lost for all time in their own unending ocean. Will you teach me all the important things you know? How did you find them out? If I told you, that would spoil it. There aren't going to be any questions between us except the ones your eyes ask and my eyes answer. Nothing said? Nothing except what my heart says and your heart understands. Darling. Oh, my darling. Dan. That kiss was like the beginning of the world. For the end. Not the end. Tomorrow we'll be in Honolulu all day. And I'm going to take you way up in the mountains where you can look down and see the ocean on all sides. And you'll hear music, but you won't know where it comes from. No one does. It's a legend. Well, what's wrong? What are you thinking about? You. Dan. 
told you not to try to talk to me on deck, Rocky. I know it's all right. And Steve from the bar talking to the Countess. All right, talk fast. Everything's set. The Countess is going to take care of Steve. She's going to slip him some knockout drops in his drink. Now, if you can get off the boat when we dock in the morning, Lamb will be waiting. He's got a freighter on the other side of the island to take you off. Okay, thanks, Rocky. I'll get off. And ditch that dame, will you? If you don't get off tomorrow, it's your last chance. And if you lose it, it's curtains. I won't lose it. Don't worry. The car you ordered is waiting on the dock, Miss Jones. It's a beautiful morning. You should have a glorious day. All right, Louise, thank you. Find Mr. Hardesty for me and tell him I'm waiting. Mr. Hardesty, my name's Walter Lamb. You got the boat ready? Yeah, the captain's name is Hogue. His ship's the Mary Ann. She's waiting with a steam up. All right, let's get out of here. There you are, you truant. Where have you been, Dan? Oh, hello there. I've been hunting everywhere for you. Disappeared into thin air. Well, yes, I... You see, I had some business. I'll... I'll have to see you later, Joan. Oh, Dan, I had everything planned. I have a picnic lunch. Did you forget? We were going up in the mountains. Well, no, but I, I got tied up oh, and... Oh, please come, Dan. Just for a little while. We're all ready to shove off, Hardesty. Yeah, well, let's see you. Suppose I make it a little later. Where are you, over on Front Street? Well, yes, but you'd better come now while the coming's good. I'll be there in an hour. If you're wanted on this island, it doesn't take long to find you. I won't be more than an hour. Come on, Joan. Let's have a look at your mountain. Whatever happened to Helen's romance? Oh, it's fizzled out, like all Helen's love affairs. That's too bad. And I'll bet she doesn't suspect why. Oh, of course not. She doesn't dream she has a little breath of trouble. That's why we recommend Colgate Tooth Powder. You see, anyone can be the victim of a little breath of trouble. I mean unpleasing breath. It happens to thousands without their knowing. Marks them down socially. Brings them unhappiness. And they seldom suspect the real reason. Don't let that breath of trouble catch up with you. Do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests prove that Colgate Tooth Powder in seven cases out of ten instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And when it comes to cleansing, money can't buy a dentifrice that will clean your teeth better or quicker than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember the name. Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. And now, Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo bring you the second act of One Way Passage, starring Humphrey Bogart and Joan Bennett. So Joan and I borrowed an hour and left the world behind. She sat, leaning back against a tree more beautiful than any woman would ever be again because she was the last woman for me, and I knew it. Dan, you know, when I was a little girl, I used to think that heaven was a place with golden streets where everyone went fluttering around like mad on wings. I didn't have any idea then that heaven would turn out to be a little spot in the mountains above Honolulu. I wish we could stay here forever. Do you think you could be happy living the rest of your life with me? I don't think I could ever be happy any other way, now. Look, there's something I've got to tell you. Is it serious? Very. Oh, then don't tell me today. We're not real, you know. This mountain isn't real. Nothing about us is real. I don't think anything else is real. We meet two strangers in a cocktail bar in China. We part, and then we meet again. We fall in love. And yet we still know so little about each other doesn't make sense. It can't be real. I don't want to know any more than I know now. Do you? But what kind of people are we? What have we done? What do we intend to do? Well, about the past, I think I was born the first time you looked at me. And about the future, well, if I ever lose you, I think I'll die. And in between the past and the future, we have this. And you can't say this isn't real. You're sure nothing... Nothing else matters. Very sure. You don't question the gifts the gods bring. Maybe you don't. 
Listen, there must be a fire down there. No. More likely they're hunting for someone. Got to get out of here. Come on, Joan. All right, Dan. <laughs> stopping the car here. This isn't our Joan, ship. Joan, you're going aboard without me. I'm not going. Please don't ask me why. Well, if you're not sailing, neither am I. Joan, there's no time to lose. I've left everything to say until the last moment, and now it's too late, and there isn't time. I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. Please believe me. We'll meet somewhere, somehow. I'll write to you from wherever I find myself. But where, where are you going? Somewhere. I don't know. I'm bailing on a freighter just off here as soon as I can make it. I'm coming with you. Darling, you can't. Now be a good girl and listen to me. I'll go anywhere with you, anywhere. Please get out of here, Joan. You've got to. I know. I've known a goodbye in everything you've said and looked. I wish I could have meant more to you. Are you afraid, Dan? Did the ship doctor say something to you? No. No one said anything. Oh, don't lie to me. He must have you know, and now you don't want me. Oh, Dan, please take me. Please take me. Joan. Joan, what's wrong? Joan. Odyssey. They're hunting all over the island for you. Where are you going? I've got to get this girl back on the ship. She's fainted. Well, Doc, you got her back to the ship just in time. Dan. Yes, dear. Don't leave me. Say you won't leave me. He's not going to leave you. I'd like to speak to you a moment, Odyssey. Yeah, of course. I'll be back in a moment, darling. I don't want you to upset her in any way. That girl is suffering from a chronic heart ailment. It's only a matter of months, perhaps even weeks. If she has the slightest cause for emotion, we could lose her now. Come on, Dan, will you? You can still make it. No, not now, he can't. You're coming with me, Dan. Steve, you've got to trust me. You've got, you've got to let me stay with Joan. You've got a heck of a nerve asking me to trust you now. You've just got to. If she knew the truth about me, it would kill her. I tried to tell her and couldn't. Now she mustn't know. That's right, Mr. Burke. This man is my prisoner, it's Doc. It's only five days to San Francisco. That's the most she and I can ever have. My breaking days are over, Steve. Whatever my word is worth to you, will you take it? Okay, Dan. I'll take it. Thanks, Copper. <laughs> So the ship went on toward San Francisco. And at last, she and I, who knew the importance of every second, met for the last time. And somehow I think we both knew it was the last time, though neither of us said so. No moon tonight. Look how black the sky is. No, we don't need the moon now. That's strictly a prop for people who are just getting acquainted. It doesn't seem possible that we could ever have been strangers. Never. You know, Joan... Men pretend not to need things. I've tried to pretend, tried to be the lone hunter, but down inside I've, I've been like everybody else. One half of something looking for the other half. Me? You. Dan, there's no one like you. I could talk to you forever. Will you talk to me forever? If there's a God, I will. Hello, Dan. It's getting chilly. How about turning in? San Francisco in the morning, you know. Okay, Steve, whatever you say. Come on, Joan. Let's slip down to the bar for one final drink. A goodbye one. Here you are. A few drops of paradise. Yep. What does San Francisco mean to you, Dan? A lot of things. The end of a lot of things. I love San Francisco. I always have, too, until now. Why now? The end of our journey. But we'll be together. Yes, we will. After a little while. It's not more business like Honolulu. Oh, a little. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving immediately for Mexico City. Oh, well, could I? Do you think... No. I'm making the plans for us. After all, I am the man of the family. All right, darling. What are the plans? You and I are meeting in Mexico City at the Palace Bar on New Year's Eve. Oh, it's so long to wait. I'm not going to try to explain it now, but... Well, that's the way it's got to be. 
Okay. Okay. The Palace Bar, Mexico City, New Year's Eve. And until then, Dan, you'll be with me in my heart. Hello, Miss Ames, Mr. Hardesty. Oh, hello, Captain. Have a drink? Thanks. I, I think there's one more in the shaker. Yep. You know, these last drinks at the end of a long journey are always a little gay and always a little sad. Oh, I've had many journeys endings. And I always propose this one little toast. Here's to all aboard. Wherever they may journey on, may long life and health continue with them. And in fair weather and calm seas, may we one day meet again. Shall we drink to that? Yes. Well, you don't mind if we break our glasses, do you, Captain? It's a little ceremony of ours. Why, uh, not at all. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. And here's to one meeting. One special meeting. In Mexico City on New Year's Eve. To that meeting. To that meeting. <laughs> I'll be glad when this night's over. Never saw so many drunks even in a palace bar before. Yeah, Mexico City's really roaring tonight. Hey, what happened to those two drinks I just put down here? Hello, Joan. Hello, Dan. Well, how in the heck did those glasses break? And they are in pieces. Well, I'll behave. Well, I say whoever did it, may they have a happy new year. Humphrey Bogart, who co-starred with Joan Bennett in Gene Holloway's adaptation of One Way Passage, will return to our microphone in just a moment. Hello, everybody, hello. Hello is the shampoo that glorifies your hair, so hello, everybody, hello. Use Halo shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For soap shampoos, leave a film on your hair. But Halo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. The very first time you use Halo, you'll notice your hair glistens in all its natural brilliance. The deep, full, natural color and luster comes sparkling through like sunshine through a clean window pane. And remember, even in the hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather. Halo quickly carries away loose dandruff, grease, and dirt. Needs no lemon or vinegar rinse because Halo leaves no dulling soap film. Nothing to hide your hair's natural beauty. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Use Halo on your children's hair, too. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. Remember, Halo glorifies your hair. So hello, everybody, hello. Halo shampoo, Halo. Colgate Tooth Powder for breath that's sweet and Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. Join in thanks to the lovely Joan Bennett and to the dynamic star of Warner Brothers, Humphrey Bogart, for their performances in One Way Passage. Oh, thanks, Frank. Joan and I were glad to have two tickets to One Way Passage tonight. Colgate Halo Theater of Romance moves along at a fast pace these days, and the roster of stars to come is great. Paul Lucas, Gregory Peck, Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., Errol Flynn, Cary Grant, and many others are coming your way. And I know you'll be provided with many hours of fine entertainment. See you soon. Good night and good listening. <laughs> Bulletin for the Future. Next week, Charles Vander's production of Theater Romance for Colgate Tooth Powder and Halo Shampoo stars Paul Lucas in a Christmas classic based on the life of Handel, composer of The Messiah. These presentations of Theater of Romance come to you because of your enthusiastic recognition of Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. This is your host, Frank Graham, saying good night and wishing you love, happiness, romance. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.